difference? What's the big difference between, I mean, obviously living, I've been here six years. Yep. And, uh, we've all, I've had my inter- in- injuries and I've, I've actually visited you as well. Yep. And fuck, it's painful, but yeah. it helps. <laughs> Sometimes. It, it really helps. Um, now, the difference between, let's say, the typical Thai physio uh, spots where they're going to take the the infrared, you know, the gel yep. and the sensor, they're just basically adding heat um, yep. and they're finding, you know, where that pain spot is. But the physio side is not as in, in depth. What are you kind of offering that's like a little bit different than that? Well, I think because I come from that training background, that's actually, so, you know, I study physical therapy. That's my official, you know, title, I guess. Um, but one reason why I start call, to call myself the injury fixer is because, like, even in, in the West, like, a lot of physical therapists there, yeah, it's, you know, some of them are good, but a lot of them are not, quite frankly. Um, so I kind of wanted to, you know, not be the not be the physio. Um, but the difference, I think, because I come from that training background and, and I became quite nerdy about it, so I, le- I read a lot from... Um, I don't know if you ever have you ever heard of uh, Westside Barbell, Louis Simmons. He's like a no. powerlifting uh, guy, and like those articles that they were talking about, okay, how to you know strengthen guys' backs and and hamstrings so they can squat a thousand pounds. I apply those same principles and to help people you know be able to squat at all. You know if, if they weren't able to, for mm-hmm. example. So I, I learned a lot from kind of the Bruce Lee method. I s- always say like you know like I steal from everybody. Adopt what's useful the and best, reject yeah. what's lo- useless. So, um, mm. so yeah, I think a lot of normal physical therapists who, uh, yeah, if, they, if they're not into training themselves, they don't really understand. Yeah, it's kind of like o- the same methodology. No matter what injury you have, it's uh-huh. whether it's your knee or your shoulder or your back, they kind of give you the same advice. I find and there there's some good ones in Chalong for sure. Oh yeah, uh, and and the, like all that stuff, like you know, ultrasound, massage. Uh, chiropractic and, and whatever like I, I use some of those things myself like trigger point and, and whatever and exercise like all these individual things they can really help but the problem is like it's it's usually not the entire puzzle it's one p- piece mm-hmm. of the puzzle sometimes you're lucky you know if you just need like if, for example if your uh, your back hurts and it's just one muscle that that's weak we and you, you happen to stumble upon the one exercise that strengthens that muscle that fixes your back pain. And usually people go around telling everybody like, I just did this one exercise that fixed my back pain. You should do it too. You know, or yeah. I started, I did yoga and that fixed my back pain and that was it, you know, or I got ultrasound and, and that did it, you know, like it's always based on personal experience. The one thing that I did and that fixed me and that will fix you too. Uh, but a lot of times, you know, what, what causes one person's back pain isn't what causes the next person's back pain and usually it's it's yeah. it's three things um so that's why i always like to attack it from from all the different angles you know like yeah you, there's some some tight spots usually you need to loosen them up you need uh, there's some weak sp- weak areas you need to strengthen them up and then the other big difference i think between me and a lot of others i, l- I look at the whole thing um so for example if most physios and even orthopedic surgeons etc like let's say you got knee pain look just at the knee okay what's going on with the knee you know is it meniscus is it acl is it the ligament or is <coughs> it tendonitis or whatever and i kind of just look at that uh but you also have to look at this is what i do okay what what's causing let's say you got uh, like inflammation in the tendon you can work directly on the inflammation mm-hmm. but what's causing it you know it's kind of like a, a car that's out of alignment if you get a car with one tire a little bit softer on one side and you keep the car in the garage no big deal year later the car is still the same car um if you just take it out to get the groceries once or twice a week um 500 meters down the street probably a year later will still be fine too but if you take it on the highway and you're going to drive it for many many miles and fast then you know something's going to wear down right eventually mm. then if you take it to the mechanic the mechanic only fixes the part uh, replaces the part that's that's worn down but doesn't fix the alignment of the car then and you're going to drive it again it's going to happen over and over again yeah, right. it has so like a ripple effect. So as you, well. you get you yeah. get the same problem because you didn't take away what's causing it. So for example, with, with the knee, a lot of times it's a tight ankle. So a lot of people, like for example, you could have sprained your ankle when you were twelve years old playing football, and it's well, you're twelve years old, so you wake up uh, the next morning and it doesn't hurt anymore. You go play, play football again, uh, but often what happens is it doesn't fully recover like the pain goes away but uh, you still got some and stiffness you, and you start to favor it a bit exactly well. so, yeah. so and and again when you're you know under 25 that's rarely a problem but then you know 25 30 35 40 whatever yeah, i had that with my i had a like a scree- i would have like this knee pain every so every so often like once every two years my left knee 
Uh, I just couldn't squat. Like, yeah. Not even body weight. Uh-huh. And it would come out of nowhere. And basically what I ended up finding was my left quad after like two years later was like substantially smaller than my yep. right. And then that started to lead to lower back pain. Exactly. And I went and saw another physio guy as well in Chalong at that point. And basically the physio was, he's like, just go in a pool and wiggle your left leg for months. Uh-huh. Like just build up. Like he's like, you literally have no, your hamstring is like, there's nothing there. Yeah. He's like, whatever you're doing. So if I was squatting, I was probably using like 80% on this leg. Yeah, exactly. And then you don't really notice it. And then it kind of, tr- you know, it snowballs and it goes from your knee to your back. And then eventually yep. it somehow worked its way to my shoulder. Huh. And yeah, it, it, and you really know, you never really know where that pain was originally coming from until you kind of go through those, those sessions. But yeah.